what I've got here is the home page of um, the Linux from scratch version 1.0 uh, book. Uh, you can see it hasn't even got a version number, although I believe in the introduction it does say that it is version 1. As you can see, this is the whole book, and if you look further down, you can see it's even got stuff which now is part of uh, Beyond the Linux from Scratch. So, Linux from Scratch, already we can see a, a difference in the modern Linux from Scratch. Is the original Linux from Scratch was effectively building a system that included a windowing graphical system. It included internet servers uh, and an email, working email as well. Now, bearing in mind this probably, um, the email subsystem, it probably includes email server because back then you could just set up a server and uh, attach it to the internet and uh, I think it was called a relay, become, become a relay for email but because of the problems with spam. Um, the internet service providers became much more strict on accepting, uh, you know, unknown uh, servers. So this section here is probably not appropriate anymore. So the Linux and Scratch as we know it today is all these chapters right from the beginning um, up to and including chapter 13. Uh, so that would be a standard Linux from scratch build. Just for the fun of it, I did actually go on and do a little bit more. So I will be doing uh, the extra bits on additional videos. Um, I did install links just to ease the downloading of packages onto the system. Um, Telnet, a Telnet daemon I, I installed as well to allow me to access the uh, Linux from scratch 1.0 box remotely uh, as I said in the previous video to allow me to copy and paste commands uh, I didn't bother installing any of the other um, servers because I thought well this is not really about setting up a working system as I say it's probably not a good idea anyway because it's insecure it's old it probably wouldn't work with a lot of modern software anyway um, so I just cherry picked uh, as I say the um, Telnet. In fact, you install it there and you configure it down here for some reason. But um, yeah, it's it's not a problem. It does work. Um, and then I installed the X Window Assistant, which only actually <laughs> involves, funnily enough, it, it's about half a dozen packages, and you've got this graphical system. So it's quite interesting to see how basic everything is, um, and how quickly you can get a graphical environment which is totally unlike what it is um, these days. Um, incidentally I fa did find going through this especially with the uh, boot scripts how because they're so basic you can actually see you get a real feel for what actually does the work um, so it was quite educational from that point of view. These days you look at boot script and it's a load of scripting and you sort of tend to ignore it because you think oh that's too complicated to look at or to try and fathom out plus it just works you don't need to look at it anyway um, you know in the modern Linux of scratch you just basically unzip the, the boot scripts you don't even copy and paste them so unless you specifically go and have a look at them to see how they work you, you're totally oblivious to it whereas here you do actually get to copy and paste them um, and I think one or two of them I did have to tweak as I remember so it, it does get you closer to the to the coal face, if you like, of seeing how everything is all um, bolted together. So that's the book. Um, as you can see, I've got it on the local server. This is my Pentium Pro box, this P P Pro 200. It's it's just a little server I use. It's handy to have things on the server. I've got a bit of a flaky internet, so I tend to download stuff to it uh, and just serve it from there rather than rely on the internet which could go down at any moment and I also use this as a way of um, downloading the packages uh, locally as well um, so I haven't decided how to demonstrate how I got the packages on there because the thing is how you're going to do it could be different to how I'm going to do it but we'll see about that and I'll point out the, the basic problems uh, that I had to overcome to uh, A to 
do the build remotely and B, to get the packages onto the system, um, especially as when all the links to all the packages are downloaded, use HTTPS. And as I said, the host system has no knowledge of what HTTPS protocol is. So this is where this server came into uh, being quite useful for me. So if you type in SU 6.1 on the internet, you'll get various pages coming up. Um, one of which is this page here on the Internet Archive. Uh, and I downloaded this originally just to see how it compared to the copy that I've got, which is slightly different to this one. Um, some of the files in it, some of the like the contents and um, the README file and so on are slightly smaller on this version. So I, I haven't looked into why there's a difference. I don't know if it's because it's an American release for the US market, uh, whether it's released just for Germany, being Suze is originally a German company, or what it is, I don't know. But I did find on the Internet Archive another copy of it, which also has a nice picture of the box that the uh, discs came in. Um, so if you were to download this, this looks to be exactly the same uh, version as the version that I've got. Um, it certainly came in the same box as this. It looks exactly the same as that. Um, the dates of the files are the same. On, the, on this version here, the files are all dated on April 1999, whereas the dates on this one are May 1999 and that tallies up with the dates on the discs that I've got so if you wanted to be t truly sure uh, about what you're using if you do want to follow along with what I'm doing then this is probably the one that I'd recommend to download um, Uh, just purely because it ties up with what I've got. Um, now, the if we go to the files that are on there. There's five CDs to download. Um, for a stand, there's, there's several types of installation. There's a minimal installation, which I think you only need the first disc for. There's a standard disc, uh, standard installation, which needs discs one, two, and three. I think it only needs a couple of files off the second and third disc. Um, and that's the installation we'll be going for. The, the minimal one's not enough. You, you'll need um, the sort of standard installation uh, to have any chance of getting anything uh, going. And even then, there's a couple of other packages you have to install uh, later. All of the sources for SUSE Linux are on disk 5 and partly on disk 4. So ultimately, you will need to download all of the disks to to be going on. And it's probably a good idea to have a complete set anyway. Um, now with this image, which this uh, upload does not have, it's only got the disks, it has actually got the images of the floppies that come with the, or came with the SUSE Linux version 6.1. Now that could be quite useful because I can't, I can't remember that the first disk of the, um, the first CD of SU 6.1 is bootable, but I can't remember exactly when bootable or, or the ability to boot from a CD was first um, available in BIOSes of computers. I, I have this idea is somewhere between 1995 and the end of the decade. So, for example, the Pentium MMX machine that I'll be using is capable of booting from a CD, so I didn't need these floppy images. Um, and as I say, that's from around 97, 98 or so. But if you're using a slightly older machine, maybe even a 486, um, it, the chances are that you won't be able to boot from a CD, so you will need these boot disks. And the only difference between these are is that you boot from the first one, and you may optionally need the modules disk. So you need the boot disk and the modules disk. You need to write them to a floppy. Um, the modules tend to have more esoteric things on them, such as SCSI cards, maybe some network adapters, if your network adapter is not uh, enabled and you need that during the installation, which is probably unlikely. 
Um, uh, but generally, the boot, the initial boot disk is enough, and you you probably won't need the modules. As I say, it depends on how weird and wonderful the hardware is that you've got. Um, but yeah, but certainly if you if you find that your machine cannot boot from a CD, you you'll definitely need to at least write an image with this uh, floppy image here, and it's advisable to have this modules disk handy as well. As I remember on the CD, these images on the first CD, these images are also there, plus some um, other uh, floppy images. As I remember, there's one for booting from a SCSI uh, disk, uh, and I think there's a, a second modules disk as well. I can't remember if there's any others, but the standard boot image will let you boot from what probably 99% of people would want, which is an EIDE interface. So that should be good to go. Otherwise, if like me, you're lucky enough to have a machine that will boot from a CD drive, then you don't need to, no, you don't need, you can download them, but you, you wouldn't need to have them available at the installation. So just to recap, you need the five ISOs to burn to CDs and the two floppy images if you find that your CD drive can't boot. Now, I suppose I should mention here about virtual machines. I guess you could do this build in a virtual machine, but again, it would depend whether the virtual machine is capable of emulating old hardware. Now, the um, chipset, the, I guess, North and South Bridge chipset that the machine uses that I've got is uh, an Intel PII X3. So... That gives you an idea of the age of the system. Um, again, you've got to be careful that the system's not too new, that the distribution that you use uh, won't support it or won't work correctly. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, but other than that, it, if, if you can emulate such an old machine, it's probably going to be easier to use in a, um, a virtual environment, but certainly not, not as much fun um, as doing it on genuine hardware. So, yeah, so once you've downloaded them, what I'll be doing in the next video is just showing you the machine booting up on the first CD image and how to install SUS, um from the CD images.